The entire cornerstone of the ancient Egyptian belief system was related to the heart, and everything was focused on preparing for a time when the divine light would return and their hearts would be weighed against this light. The weighing of the heart ceremony was not a ritual enacted because their biological container had expired. They knew the truth of their divinity and their true ethereal forms, and as such, prepared their souls and their heart for this coming light, not their physical bodies or their physical heart, which were only symbolic. The physical heart, like the pineal gland, are physical extensions of energy points within our ethereal bodies. Our ethereal body is who we are first and foremost. It is the form in which we were first created. And as such, it is with the ethereal body that we feel changes in vibrations or resonance first. These changes are then relayed to certain physical parts of our body that relate to these energy points. So for example, when sun gazing, you may feel a sensation behind your forehead and your first thought is that it must be your pineal gland. However, what you are experiencing is your pineal gland reacting to a resonance from your third eye chakra, which is then being felt in the physical extension of that energy point. The correct way to perceive yourself is as an ethereal being, for this is who you are, and this is what the establishment have tried to hide from the masses, to keep them locked down into a physical perception of themselves. The establishment have even gone as far to create departments to program the reality of the masses into one of physicality, using agencies like science, which they then disguise as education, when in fact it is merely programming. Most people wouldn't know that the Big Bang Theory was postulated by a Catholic priest, and which establishment has so much to lose if humanity woke up to the fact they are ethereal and immortal and they are only responsible to their own souls and God for their immortality? Do you think we would need crime control and government to live as decent beings upon this planet if that truth were known? I think not. So what this information is showing us is the truth of who we are, and that is ethereal beings with a physical extension. And we need not fear death of our physical extension, but instead pay attention to the cycle of death and resurrection of our souls. If we look to the Aramic Bible in verse Matthew 10:28. And you shall not be afraid of those who kill the body that are not able to kill the soul. Rather be afraid of him who can destroy soul and body in Guiana. In other translations, the religious institutions have equated Guiana to hell. However, what this is speaking of is the soul being wiped from existence as the ancient Egyptians believed happened if you were not carrying the weight of enough light within your heart. The love we have collected throughout our lifetimes is an energy that can be measured by the Creator. And when this divine light returns, we will be measured against the light of the Creator to see if we are worthy of our immortality. And we see this verse is number 1028 which is reduced to 10, 10, showing the infinite cycle of the twin souls. In this verse from the Egyptian Book of the Dead, they speak of the heart and truth leading them back to heaven and their godlike divinity. It states, May the hearts of gods lead him in his exalted state into heaven among the gods who appear in visible forms. If any god or any goddess attack Osiris Ani, whose word is truth, when he setteth out, the ancestor of the year who liveth upon hearts, Osiris, shall eat him when cometh forth from Abydos, and the ancestors of Ra shall reckon with him, and the ancestors of Light shall reckon with him. This is showing that those who live and speak in truth will once again experience a time when they walk as gods on this earth and that those who do live in truth are protected and guided by the gods. 
However, although our paths are destined, we have free will to take a higher or lower path and see if we meet our tests through strength of character and heart or whether we give in to the temptation of the lower path and remain in bondage to the physical plane. We see this lower path symbolized in the other card connected to the number six lover's card and that is the devil card which is card number 15. The devil card is symbolic of our bondage to the physical plane when we descend into lower consciousness when we forget our divinity we forget that we are ethereal and instead only think of ourselves as finite and physical this is why we see the chains around the necks of the divine twin souls for they are trapped in the physical perception of themselves and a victim of the devil in Daniel 520 it shows the heart is connected to his covenant in this verse but it could not override his mind in lower consciousness. It states, But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was disposed from his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him. Showing that when the mind refused the heart, his divinity remained elusive to him. And we see that the number five is symbolic of the covenant and 20 shows the connection to the divine which measures his worthiness through his heart. We also see a connection to the heart and the sun with the ancient Maya who willingly sacrificed their hearts to the sun. Once again some people seem to be offended by this practice and look down on the Maya due to these rituals. But what they don't understand is that the Maya knew they were ethereal and that their soul would return again, so they did not fear death. These rituals were performed because they believed a time of higher consciousness could be brought back through the sacrificing of the heart. We also see in some other cultures that pain and sacrifice are often a way to strengthen the heart of a warrior. When a person deals honorably with pain and sacrifice, this increases the light within their heart. In some Native American tribes, there was a ceremony known as the Sun Dance, and this was a ceremony only the bravest and most honorable warrior could partake in. This warrior was then hung on hooks to take the pain of the people in his village. They believed in doing this, he not only lightened his own heart, but their hearts too. And in Greek mythology, there is a story about a centaur named Chiron, and this story is also describing the strength of heart that comes through pain. Chiron embodies the compassion and humility pain can bring to a person, but in turn strengthens their heart also. This is why it takes strength of heart to return to the higher consciousness of an immortal soul. And we can see this depicted on the strength card, which is card number eight, symbolic for immortality, where the woman has closed the lion's jaws with strength of heart and not violence. We can also see this relayed in the story of Daniel and the lions. Daniel 6.16 Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spoke and said, Daniel, your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Daniel 6.20 and when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice to Daniel. And the king spoke and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is your God, whom you serve continually, able to deliver you from the lions? Daniel 6.21 Then said Daniel to the king, O king, live forever. Daniel 6.22 My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouths, that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocence was found in me, and also before you, O king, I have done no hurt. Daniel 6.23 Then the king, exceedingly glad for him, and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den 
and no manner of hurt was found on him because he believed in his God. The verses here in Daniel 6 are showing that when Daniel believes in his divinity and is no longer trapped in the illusion of bondage to the physical body, in his darkest hour he is rewarded with the truth of his divinity and immortality. This is relayed to him by his angel, which is symbolic for his ethereal self. Therefore, the lions, knowing Daniel's understanding of his immortality, see no reason to kill him. This is what the strength card number 8 is once again symbolic for. And on the tree of life, the Sephirah Hod number 8 is directly connected to the strength card and is said to be symbolic of instead of conquering an obstacle in one's path, to rather overcome it by subduing oneself to the obstacle. And we see that the Sephirah of the heart is connected to the Sephirah of strength through the path of vision. This is symbolic in the way one perceives themselves. The story of Daniel shows that his trust in himself of who he really was was actually his trust in God and he was rewarded as such for his courage with immortality. And finally in Proverbs 10.20 we see that the heart weighted in sin is of little value compared to the soul that lives in truth. The tongue of the just is as choice silver. The heart of the wicked is little worth. Once again, 20 is connected to the heart and 10 is symbolizing the covenant of the divine twin souls and the infinite cycle of the souls. So now we have an understanding for the divine twin souls in their physical form on the material plane through the lover's card. So let us now look to the next card that is symbolic of our ethereal form and the ethereal realm, which is card number seven, the chariot.